What's up guys, Swift here covering everything Chicago Bears. Today I wanted to talk about what kind of trade we should expect with the number one pick. Everyone seems to be hanging on to the 49ers trade for Trey Lance a few years ago when predicting the kind of compensation the Bears will receive if they trade down. Now I wanted to go through history a little bit and show you guys what kind of compensation teams got when they traded the number one overall pick. I won't go any further back than 1995 here. In that year, the Bengals traded up from number five to number one overall. In moving up four spots, they only gave up pick number 36, a second rounder to do it. I think the value is higher than this now, but this goes against the idea that we would get three first round picks to move down to number four with the Colts, unless there was a huge bidding war. But let's move on. In 1997, the Rams traded up to number one overall to take Orlando Pace. They swapped the number six pick and gave the Jets their third, fourth, and seventh round picks in the same draft. So the Jets went from number one all the way down to number six and only got third, fourth, and seventh round picks for it. Still not a bad move in my opinion, but definitely not what fans are envisioning this offseason. And then we go to 2001, when the Falcons traded up for number one overall to take Michael Vick. They gave up first, second, and third round picks in the same draft to move up. That was roughly 20 years ago, and it seems like the price for moving up was getting a bit steeper. And then we go 15 years without the pick being moved. And then in 2016, the Rams traded up for Jared Goff. The Rams went from eighth overall to number one. This is the kind of deal that we should be looking for. The Rams gave up two first round picks, two second round picks, and two third round picks to move up from eight to number one overall. The Titans were able to turn that one pick into two Pro Bowlers and much more. The Titans drafted Jack Conklin, Derrick Henry, Corey Davis, Austin Johnson, and Jonu Smith with the resources from that one pick. That's right, the Titans still have Derrick Henry, and Conklin is now a Cleveland Brown, but he's still playing at a very high level in the NFL. If the Titans wouldn't have missed on selecting Corey Davis, number five overall in the first round, they would have made out even better on this deal. Now, this is the starting point at which we would like to see a deal get done. As Bears fans, we really want a team to overpay like the Titans did in 2016. The Jared Goff deal and the 49ers trading up for Trey Lance are the two biggest draft hauls in recent history. I think fans are getting the expectation that it's a huge overpay like that or bust. And I kind of wanted to talk about that for a minute. I believe it's worth trading down a few spots, even if the best offer is only a second round pick. I think it's imperative to recoup that second rounder from the Chase Claypool trade, but Ryan Poles is in a position to let the hype build up, let one of these teams fall in love with a quarterback, and then sit back and watch while a bidding war goes off, and then you auction off the pick to the highest bidder. Maybe we don't get a package as good as the Dolphins got from the 49ers, but we're still in a rare and advantageous position to turn this one draft pick into a handful of picks to help us with the rebuild. I think the price of trading up now is a lot steeper than it was 20 years ago when the Orlando Pace and Michael Vick deals happened. More recently, it costs more to move up in the draft which is great news for the Chicago Bears. Also, the fact that there are multiple teams who need quarterbacks and three quarterbacks potentially for teams to fall in love with, and I think Ryan Poles will get at least a few good offers for the number one overall pick. We are just waiting for that deal to happen. I think it could happen sometime in March, which is what I would actually prefer. I think if Poles was able to move the pick early, in weeks before the draft, that way our scouting department has time to adjust to our new draft position and extra picks. But I can't rule out polls holding this pick until draft day to try and get the best offer. It's going to be a wild ride for sure. I've been watching a ton of NFL draft tape and finally have my first scouting report almost finished. Watch out for a Tyree Wilson video later today or tomorrow. Stay tuned, guys. Remember to hit that like button for me. And until next time, bear down.